Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. Dill sitting here Sunday morning. It feels like Christmas morning, right? Previewing what could be the best football game that we see all of 2024. Georgia heading on the road to Alabama, sitting here on the road, two and a half point favorites. Dill, it doesn't get any better than this as a college football fan. Like if you're just being frank about it, these are the two biggest names in the sport of college football going to battle, fired up to get into it. Now, before we do it, as always, whether you're a Georgia fan, whether you're an Alabama fan, whether you're just a college football fan that's going to be locked in on this football game, let it fly in the comment section. Whether you agree with the boys, whether you disagree, whether you're mixing up with the opposing fan base, that that's the beauty of the, doing these game predictions. Though I fully expect it to be a battlefield in the comment section. Wouldn't want to have it any other way. Appreciate you guys rocking with it. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Dill, let's get into this matchup, and I want to start with this Alabama offense that's been one of the best offenses in the country through the first couple of weeks, going up against what I think is the, straight up the best defense in the country, this Georgia defense. I want to start with this. Last year in the SEC championship game, we watched that game so many times back over the summer. One, phenomenal football game. Two, just trying to watch these two teams more. It felt like Georgia, and I know I sound like an absolute idiot here, sitting in my basement telling Kirby Smart – that I don't think he game planned the right way. It felt like Georgia was too conservative in terms of keeping Jalen Milrow in the pocket. And I get it. You want to make Jalen Milrow operate as a pocket passer. That is where he's most uncomfortable. Georgia tried to do that, but at times you kind of not really pinning ears back with your edge rushers, just trying to keep Jalen Milrow in the pocket, leaving two court or two linebackers in the spy at times. They felt it kind of felt like you took that Georgia aggression Away from that George defense in 2023, I wonder if Glenn Schumann and Kirby Smart, you know, go back to that film and say, hey, we got to turn it up a little bit more. Because you look at this matchup and say, I think you got one of the best pass rushers, not only in the SEC, but in the country, in Jalen Walker, going up against an Alabama offensive line, specifically at the tackle spot that has struggled in times in pass protection. The biggest thing I'm going to be looking at is how is George's defense plan on dealing with a dynamic quarterback like Jalen Milrow. Yeah, and I really think the personnel for Georgia should dictate that a little bit in the way you said. I mean, you're starting to have some pass rushers really, really emerge. Dude, Dylan Walker looks like an awesome pass rusher. Damon Wilson's played good ball. Gabe Harris has played pretty good ball. And then you got linebackers who can really, really run. And that's the, that's the tough part about dealing with Alabama fundamentally is I think you see this Kalen DeBoer offense really starting to take form around what Jalen Milrow can do. And you saw, I think, Alabama and Tommy Reese try to adjust that later on in the year, but I don't think they ever fully embraced it in the way. If you're watching Alabama now, everything's built off of a read option. Jalen Milrow has the option to keep it every play. He's keeping it a fair amount. You see how explosive he is. He's getting truly just drawn up QB powers, all those sorts of plays. So you're starting to see this Georgia or Alabama offense, I should say, really start to mold around Jalen Milrow. And with that, I think you do need to turn the heat up because if you play too passive, he's too quick. When you give him too much space, he's way too fast. He's way too explosive. So that'll be kind of what I'm looking for is how does Georgia take some of that away in a way they really didn't last year because he had a lot of time. He could scramble. He was making a lot of plays. I'm kind of looking for that for Georgia this year. Yeah, I just think I think if you're Kirby Smart in Georgia, like don't let another team dictate how you play football. Like this is Georgia. This is the Georgia defense. Go play your style regardless of who you're going up against. And I get scheming around an opponent. Totally get it. But don't let it kind of take away that Georgia edge, at least in my opinion. I would like to see, you know, Georgia ask their edge rushers to pin their ears back and try to go get after Jalen Milrow. And then if you're spying a linebacker, you just need one. Like you have, there ain't many linebackers in the country that I trust spying on Jalen Milrow. If there are any, they're in the Georgia linebacker room. And so what I'm looking for is, hey, go play the the Georgia brand of defense that we've seen the last couple of years because I felt like they got away from it in that SEC championship game. You mentioned another thing, this this Alabama offense, and there were so many question marks about, okay, how does Jalen Milrow fit and what Kalen DeBoer wants to do on offense? What What's the beauty of Kalen DeBoer? Like what makes him one of the best head coaches in all of college football? There, yes, he has a system that he wants to implement, but he's going to create his offense around the personnel. And I think he looked at this Georgia or this Alabama offense and say, hey, we got absolute road graders on the offensive line. We have the most dynamic quarterback in the country in Jalen Milrow and two phenomenal backs in Justice Haynes and Jam Miller. We are going to lean on the run game. 
They're running the football 62% of the time. That's 15th most in the country. They're averaging almost six yards per carry. That's 14th most in the country. One of the big matchups here, what does first and second down look like? Because you know Alabama is going to want to run the football. It's really hard to run the football right at Georgia, and it's even harder to run at Georgia on the perimeter because of how fast these linebackers are. How do you see that matchup in terms of if you were to predict what who – because this is probably one of the most important conversations in this football game. Does Alabama get the rushing attack going, or does Georgia is Georgia able to handle what Alabama is trying to do running the football? You know, I'll say Michael Williams being – I was going to say a huge story. He's <laughs> a monster story because you kind of look at what Alabama has been doing – I think they're really challenging defensive ends across. Like you look at that Wisconsin game, they really put them in a bit of purgatory because they do two different things. One, they use Jalen Milrow to kind of keep them at home with that read option look, but they also have the option just running right at them and trying to move them off the ball because they're that's the one thing I really like about what Alabama's done. And you kind of look, I think you need that hyper versatile, really athletic guy who can also stand up blockers at, at the point of attack. And I kind of look, I love what Georgia has in terms of some really, really good athletes like Damon Wilson and Gabe Harris, but they are not the physical specimens necessarily that Michael Williams is. So I think he's going to be a monster storyline. If he, I think Ingram Dawkins can be a real weapon there. I think he's a very athletic, bigger, more physical kind of hybrid edge tackle guy. So those two guys I'm kind of looking for, because again, you can't just be an athlete because they're going to run right at you if they can move you off the ball, but you also can't just be maybe what George was doing last year where they were going like, three down with like Brinson Stackhouse and another defensive tackle because you still got to be able to move. So I think those two guys I'm looking at are going to be huge in terms of what they can So do. big. Like every, like Mikel Williams, one of, one of the best uh, players in all of college football. And again, people talk about his pass rush. The real value he brings, at least in my opinion, he is one of the best edge defenders against the run that you see in the country. The edge defenders are going to be tested against the run. Having a healthy Mike Williams is going to be a massive story for Georgia in this football game. If you're looking to monitor an injury, like that's the one that you're you're probably looking at throughout the week. Dill, I think the second storyline here is we know what Alabama wants to do in the passing attack. They want to push the ball down the field. Jalen Milrow completing 50% of his balls, 20 plus yards down the field. Not too surprising, right? Alabama doesn't necessarily go to that intermediate passing attack. I mean, Jalen Milrow is almost completing more passes 20 plus yards down the field than he is between 10 and 20 yards. And that's kind of what we saw in 2023 as well. And it's been going to Ryan Williams. Like if there are two storylines, one, how does Al- how does Georgia deal with this Alabama rushing attack and how do they get after Jalen Milrow? The other storyline is how do you deal with Ryan Williams? One of the things that I'm looking for that could potentially be a a matchup that favors Georgia potentially. And I'm going to say potentially because we haven't really seen Ryan Williams deal with this yet. You got some, you got some physical, physical cornerbacks. Can you put hands on Ryan Williams? I mean, they don't move Ryan Williams around a ton. Like he has played 85% of his snaps as a boundary wide receiver. You kind of know where he's going to be. Does Georgia ask these big physical cornerbacks, to get hands on Ryan Williams. Again, you're kind of playing with fire because we all know what Ryan Williams can do vertically, but we haven't really seen him deal with the physical presence of cornerbacks like Georgia has. Can you get hands on Ryan Williams? Uh, But more importantly, just how do you try to take Ryan Williams out of this football game, which is going to be very hard for Georgia to do. And again, you probably don't want to have to do that by leaving a safety or even two at times back deep too often because, again, you need extra guys in the box when you're playing this Alabama run scheme just because – Jalen Milrow is creating another guy. I mean, that's yep. kind of what they're doing. So, again, I think that's going to be a big day for those Georgia corners. And they're not going to be tested a whole lot, frankly. It's not like Alabama is going to be throwing at them all game. But when they're asked to go deal with Ryan Williams trying to run down the field or Jeremy Bernard, who had obviously a couple of nice plays in that Wisconsin game, can they stand tall and not, not, let, not let like that big play happen? Because obviously you even saw from last year, you see this in these type of games where you got two ultra-good teams. I mean, that probably is the fundamental difference who can kind of hit that type of play. Yeah, and though you're right. Like, it's not going to be a lot because we think Alabama is going to run the football a lot. But when those plays are dialed up, like, that's probably going to determine who who wins this football game in Tuscaloosa on Saturday night. Let's flip it to this Georgia offense. I'm not going to put too much stock in that Kentucky game. Like, I just, I'm just not. Like, I, I, you look at uh, that was probably the worst game we've seen Carson back play in a Georgia Bulldog uniform. He looked uncomfortable. I think the the question mark more is not with Carson Beck. 
It's a little bit more at the pass protection for Georgia on the offensive line. Ernest Green, a guy that you know we liked a lot in 2023, thought he'd kind of be an all SEC guy for Georgia in 2024. Struggled in a big way. You see, you saw Georgia kind of work in Monroe Freeling, who they have a lot of confidence in as well. I think the national media will talk about, okay, you lose Tate Ratledge. How does the interior offensive line deal with Georgia? Look, I think Michael Morris is a starter on 99% of football teams across the country. I mean, that concerned about the interior offensive line for Georgia, specifically in pass protection. And I'm not trying to like, that's not shade at Tate Ratledge. It's more just me shouting out Michael Morris, just being an absolute dude for Georgia. What does the matchup look like with these Georgia offensive tackles going up against an Alabama edge rusher that I don't, they're still they're trying right. to find their guy, I think, at the end of the day. I mean, Quandarius Robinson's had some really, really good Quan Russo's played solid football. Alex I, Overton, too, has been, I think, has been a dude. I think he might be the best they need, I think they need a guy who can be really consistent and get him. Because I, I would have thought they'd get more pressure from the edge. And their inside guys obviously do their thing. They're really, really good. But I would have thought they'd be able to pick on those tackles a little bit more for Wisconsin. Guys who I don't think are hyper-athletic tackles necessarily. And I didn't think they did a great job. And again, you kind of look at what made Carson Beck probably struggle the most in that football game was just, he was heated up. I mean, the ball felt like he was coming out of his hand too quickly. He wasn't comfortable kind of picking through zones that he's been so good at doing throughout his college career. So that's going to be something. If if Alabama can heat him up, I think they can make him really uncomfortable. And that's possibly how you get a Kentucky outcome for that Georgia offense for Alabama. But I think they still need to have one of those guys emerge and be a real hammer on the edge. Yeah, if you're if you're Alabama and you're that defensive coaching staff, like you are grinding what you just saw on the film from Kentucky and saying like, what did they do to make Carson Beck so uncomfortable? Because again, I we don't we don't say this much about Carson Beck. He just didn't look comfortable on the road in Lexington. Well, he's going on the road to Alabama now. Can you kind of mimic the same stuff Kentucky did? to give Carson Beck some problems. One of the big storylines for me, especially in this kind of football game where it just seems like you need dudes to make plays to win this football game, who are going to be the guys at the pass catcher position for Georgia? You know, we weren't that concerned about it coming in because we just thought there was enough talent. And then you watch the Clemson game and see, all right, London Humphreys is stepping up, Arian Smith, Dominic Lovett. But then in that Kentucky game where they kind of needed some plays, it just felt like they missed Ladd and Brock in a big way. Look, we had question marks about this Alabama secondary. They've actually played pretty damn well to start the season. You take a look. I don't at- think they've been wildly tested yet, so I wouldn't necessarily Agreed. jump to a huge conclusion. Not like Wisconsin with a back of quarterbacks going to hurt you, but I am kind of with you. I think one thing I like that you see from Alabama's new new revamp secondary is they're a little bit more varied in how they play that coverage. Obviously, Nick Saban with that pattern match zone he kind of created, that's what they kind of leaned on. You see Kane Womack working in a little bit more man coverage, some zone coverage. And that was something, frankly, I think you saw disrupt Carson Beck a little bit in Kentucky is how much variation they can play. Yes. Obviously lean a little bit heavier towards that zone coverage, but a very advanced secondary, very experienced secondary did do a lot of things to obviously throw him off of it. Yeah. And who uh, like, again, it's a young secondary. You want to try to get to some of those like blown coverages that we, we saw at USF have opportunities to hit some explosive plays against Alabama, they weren't able to connect on some. I, the talent is there for Alabama secondary. That you look at the numbers: a 52% completion percentage, given up 13th best in the country, 3.2 yards per pass, number one in the country. You're right; they haven't seen a passing attack like Georgia. But on the same side, like I'm looking at, you're going on the road to Alabama. You need a pass catcher to step up in a big way. Who's it going to be, Dill? If you were, I guess I'll just ask you, like, make your prediction. Like, who's going to be the guy Carson Beck's looking at the most in this football game? I mean, it still feels like it's going to be Lovett at some point. It still feels like he is the guy, but I think you're right. At the end of the day, nobody's really stepped up to fill those shoes. You saw in that Clemson game for the first half, they couldn't really get a guy to start making things happen. And once the floodgates opened up, everybody started eating. And you saw how much talent's in that Georgia passing room. But, again, when it gets tough, when it gets a little grimy – they need that Brock Powers. I yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Safety blanket. That him. was that. Well, like Carson Beck was uncomfortable last year. Was like, all right, where's Brock Powers been throwing the football? And normally, good things happen. They just don't have that guy right now. So I think the two big storylines: one, can you pass protect for Carson Beck? We talk a little bit about the run game, Dale. I think Alabama they got two really good linebackers. Tim Keenan on the inside has been an absolute animal. I think that'll be – I don't see Georgia's kind of slamming the rock down Alabama's throat. But because- that'll be, I think, a big bounce-back game for Georgia because they should have been able to run the ball better. And I know Kentucky's got a good front seven, 
but they shouldn't be running the ball as poorly. And you obviously Agreed. saw Kirby Smart just howling at those offensive linemen on the side. Figure it out, yeah. Like, so I think that's going to be a big yeah. unit again. Yeah. They need to play. They just need to play better. It's so important because what makes Georgia's offense so good is not never like it's never flashy, but it's so balanced. And they kind of lost their balance a little bit against Kentucky, and that's kind of what caused that offense to sputter. Dill, that's about that's about what I have in my notes. So it's about time to make the pick. I'm gonna put you on the hot seat first. You're gonna take heat either way. Georgia on the road in Tuscaloosa Saturday night, seven thirty, two and a half point favorites. Who you got? I think I'm going to go with the dogs. I just think people like a little bit of an overreaction to that Kentucky game. And they played really poorly. So that obviously gives you some concern, but I think you've seen them play really good football. Like that second half of Clemson, if they can put that performance out there, that's a really, really tough team to stop. They're running the ball really hard, really physically moving a really good second or defensive front around, if you will. And then obviously having some guys in that wide receiver room step up and make some big plays. I, Kind of look, can Colby Young, Humphreys, Arian Smith, and obviously love it. Can one of those guys or that group, if you will, as a whole, just step up and make some things happen? I think Beck's been a good quarterback. I think this defense can give this Alabama offense some problems just because of how athletic they are, like what you said with those linebackers. And if Michael Williams plays, I think I'd give George a little bit of an edge, but it's, I mean, this line's probably right about right. I don't know. It's really right know. about right. I feel horrible about whatever side I take. I'm going to take Alabama at home. You've given me Alabama as dogs at home right now. Uh, a team that, like, just using my eyeballs, I think has arguably been more, more impressive than Georgia. We saw a really good second half from Georgia against Clemson, but outside of that, they played a not-so-good opponent and then just kind of sloppy against Kentucky. To me, this game – and, I, again, I, <laughs> I don't – you don't make money betting against Kirby Smart and Georgia. I look at this game and say I feel like it's good – like, playmakers are going to need to step up and make plays. I think Alabama has a little bit more difference makers on the offensive side of the football than Georgia. So I'm going to go Alabama feel absolutely horrible about it. You're on Georgia. I'm on Alabama. It's going to be a fun one. Let it fly in the comment section. Again, I'm going to take heat for taking Bama. You're going to take some heat for taking Georgia. We appreciate you guys rocking with it. And we'll talk to y'all later. Peace.